Okay, so in this video we are going to touch upon how to parse JSON. I realized I never actually made a video dedicated to this before, so now's the chance. I mentioned this in my last video, which I haven't released yet, but that doesn't matter because this will come after that. And where we took a uh, Python dictionary, turned it into JSON, and then wrote it to a JSON file. And I mentioned I never made this kind of video. So if you're interested in how do we parse JSON, you know, the basics of parsing at least, then this will give you hopefully a good understanding to go forward with that. So if you like this kind of stuff, um, I talk about various different tips and tricks and how to's and programming and usually things I find on my own in my own work or just, you know, doing stuff on my own uh, and then sharing it with you guys. So if that sounds interesting, don't forget to hit subscribe. And let's just do a brief look at what JSON is. I'm assuming you already know since you found this video and you're interested, but if not, uh, it's just a text format for storing and transporting data, as W3School says here. And JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. If you've seen a dictionary in Python, it looks a lot like it. Um, and here we go. It has a property and a value and another property, another value, another property, another value. And just like a dictionary in Python, you can also have lists in your JSON and they will hold a collection of JSON objects. For example, this right here, this fake API that I've used in previous videos that we've called with our Angular app. And here we have a list of JSON objects for different to-do list items. So we'll get to how to go through a list here in a second, but I wanna start off pretty slow and just pull up one individual JSON object and then we'll take out the parts that we need. So I guess another question you might have is why would I want to parse JSON? And that's because JSON usually holds a lot of information like this, right? Maybe we don't want every single to-do. Maybe we just wanna look at the fourth to-do item. So where ID is equal to four and we wanna know the title. We don't care about the rest of this stuff. We just want a particular piece of the JSON, which is a real use case. So that's what we're going to use parsing for. And uh, we're going to start with the first post here. And I'll try to remember to link both of these URLs in the description. So if you're following along, you can grab those links and do just that. So let's copy this one and let's go to our Python file. And the first thing I want to do is import uh, requests and also import JSON. So these two modules we're going to use, the request we're going to use to call that fake API, and then the JSON we're gonna to use to load the response of that request and serialize it into JSON. So let's uh, create a variable called response, and I'm gonna say that is equal to requests.get, and then we'll paste in the URL. And then next, I'm going to do um, response underscore JSON. This variable is going to be equal to JSON.loads. And then what are we loading? What are we turning into JSON? We're turning the response dot text into JSON. So now if I print out this response JSON, what is it going? to look like. So let's run this pi test. So here's the response. It is exactly the same as what we see here. Now, if you wanted to, you can create a new file um, and save it as a JSON file and paste this response in here. And then there are extensions here in VS Code that you can see I was looking at it in the last video. You can turn JSON into pretty print, which they just format it for you where it looks a little better and it's easier to read than all in one line like it is here. But we already know what it looks like because we have it uh, right here for us. So we're just going to use this as a reference. So now that we have the response JSON, what if we just want to grab the title? Well, it's pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to print instead of the whole thing response JSON, I'm going to say, give me just the title, and we're going to put square braces, and then inside of the square braces, we're gonna put the string title, because that is the property 
And then what's going to return to us, it's going to return the value of that property. So remember, this is the value here of title. So now let's save and run that. Here, it is just giving us the value of the title property. Same with ID. If I wanted to get the ID instead of title, the property would be ID, and we'll run that. Here you can see ID is one. Okay, so that was simply you know one JSON object, and we grabbed one of the properties values, and the value was just a string. It wasn't another um, JSON object, which is typically what you will see. You'll see something more in depth. I guess like this, and maybe we'll do this last, something a little bit harder. But before we do that, let's move on to an array. I called it a list before, but I guess the proper name is an array of a collection of JSON objects. So this one's a good uh, example of that. Here we have an array of different to-dos, and let's go ahead and take that URL, and now we'll place it in this get. And instead of response JSON ID, um, let's just grab the very first JSON object. And so to do that, we are just going to put a zero as the index here of this array, All right? Because that's what it is, this array. And index zero would be this JSON object, index one would be this one, so on and so forth. So let's clear this and run this test pi. Here you can see we got the very first one. So if I change this to a one, saved and ran that, we now get the second to-do item. All right, what if we want to loop through all of the to-do items and we want to say, well, if ID is equal to five, get me that title. That's a good example. So let's do that. So I'm going to kill this print and I'm going to say for to-do in response JSON, if to-do uh, ID, the property ID, if its value is equal to, what did I say, five? I don't remember now, but let's just say five. Print the to-do's title. So what is this doing? Well, this first part, this four, it's going through each JSON object in this array. So it's starting off with this one and then going down, down the line. And then it's saying for each one of these, uh, let's check the ID. So if the to-do ID is equal to five, okay, if that passes, which it would pass at this one, then we'll print out the title of that JSON object. So let's run this and see that it works. Let's look, this should start with this word right here, and let's see if it in fact does that. Here it goes. So loop through them. It ignored the first four because the ID was not equal to five, but on the fifth one, it was, so then it printed the title. It continued on through. None of the other one's IDs were equal to five, so this is the only one that it ended up printing. But it did, in fact, loop through every single one of these in the array. Okay, so I said we'd do maybe a harder one, and I found this on the same fake API website that we've been using this users. It's a little more uh, intense, I would say, because now we have a list, and we can grab the very first user here, and then we see address is actually, its value is another JSON object. And then inside of that, this geo property, its value is another JSON object. So there's multi-tiers to this. And here, let's just look at the first one. So I wonder if I put slash one. Yeah, we're able just to get the first one. So let's do that. Let's just look at the first one here. I'll copy its URL place it in this, and let's think about this. So ID is pretty self-explanatory. We just went over how to get it. Um, but let's go ahead and let's say we want to get the street that this person lives on. How would we do that? So first thing we would do is we want the value of address, right? And the value of address is this entire JSON object. And then inside of that JSON object, we want the value of street. So it's actually pretty simple. What that would end up looking like, let's get rid of all this, is print, actually let's do it outside of the print. Let's say street 
this variable street is going to be equal to response JSON. The first property that we want to get the value for is address. So let's copy address and let's say give me that. Okay, but inside of address, we also want the value for street. So we're going to put another square brace right here and inside of that put street. And then below that, let's go ahead and print the value for street and see what that looks like. Clear this and run. Coolest light, is that what it in fact is? Yes. And then if we wanted lat, uh, we would go another one further. So instead of street, we'd be geo and then another score brace and lat. So let's run that. And here's the latitude, negative 37 degrees, or I guess that's a number, not a degree. Negative 37. Maybe that is a degree. I don't know. And then the same could be said with the name of the company. So if we wanted the name of the company, we would first get the value of company and then the value of name. So let's just do that company and then name. And we don't want latitude any longer. And instead of street, let's say comp for company. Paste that in there and run this. And here is the company's name. So that's how you can parse out a more intense, I guess, example of a JSON object. So I hope this was helpful. I hope it at least gets you started with parsing JSON. You're able to take the JSON that you're wanting to parse and mess with it and get the pieces out of it that you care about. And hopefully uh, you stick around for more. Hope to see you in the future and take care.